Thank you. Good afternoon. It is great to be back at Philanthropy New York for a field talk. You're about to hear from Johanna Sategi. She is a woman of extraordinary bravery. And in reading her personal story, you come to understand what courage really is. Johanna is the site coordinator of the Rampoga Clinic in Limpopo. And she is with the Mothers to Mothers program. She oversees day-to-day -day operations for Mothers to Mothers local service delivery operations, providing crucial education and support to mothers living with HIV to prevent mother-to-child transmission of HIV. And she is a spokesperson for Mothers to Mother, providing community outreach on subjects including combating stigma and promoting HIV AIDS awareness and testing. We are deeply grateful to MAC AIDS Fund for making it possible for Johanna to be with us this afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome <laughs> Johanna Sategi. I don't know what to say, whether to say good evening or good afternoon, but let me take this chance to say good evening, ladies and gentlemen. They already introduced me that I'm Johanna Sateke, not Sateke. Since I came here, I was always spelling to people S A T E K G E, you know? <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to talk, but uh, this thing doesn't matter anything. The thing is, I just want to keep time. That is why I'm having this. <laughs> My story is so long, so that we can, when I can start to talk here, hey, it can be another day while busy talking about my story. Uh, as they already introduced me, my name is Johanna Satehi. I'm from Limpopo province in South Africa, and I'm honored to be here in New York today with, uh, to present the overview of Mother to Child and Mothers to Mothers. Uh, in 2000, I was pregnant, and I was two months pregnant, and then I went to the doctor. Why did I go to the doctor? Because my partner were always accusing me of so many things that Johanna infected me with STI and the stuff. And then because I wanted to prove that, I went to the doctor. And when the doctor did the, uh, all the tests, he just said to me, you know what, you don't have STI. And then the doctor asked me something. Can I test you for HIV? Because I was confident enough, then I agreed to be tested. And then I was tested, and then I was shocked when the test came back being HIV positive. And then I didn't receive any counseling. I didn't receive any source of support. And then I just, uh, by that time, I just went, went back straight home and to tell my family that I'm pregnant. And then my mother realized something that, no, Johanna is, came up with something that she's pregnant, but she's not happy. And then I just said to my mother that the doctor told me that I'm pregnant, but the thing is, I'm going to die soon. Because the issue of disclosure was another thing. I can't say to my, to my parents and say I'm HIV positive. So, you know, my story is that uh, because of the stress that I was, w I, I was going through, even if when people visited me, I will just give away all my stuff because I was thinking that I'm going to die soon because there were no hope, no any source of, of support. I didn't receive any counseling. And then early 2001, I gave birth to a baby boy who loved by everybody in the community. You know, when you, when you are you are somebody like me, because I was old enough, I was I was about to reach thirty. I was twenty six years, and then when I fell pregnant, everybody was happy. So when I gave birth, everybody was so happy to see that I'm a, I'm a mother. But when my child 
is uh, 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 my child got sick at around four months, hoping that he will be fine like each and every child. Can you believe it? My child died at seven months in my arms. And then let me tell you what happened 15 years later. There were no medicine. There were no drugs to prevent mother to child. And the stigma around HIV were so high. And most women were, were, being, were afraid to be tested for HIV because most of people, they, 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 they were committing suicide, you know, all those things around HIV. Even when we went, I still remember because I'm a one person who's, who's always go to the church because I'm a, I'm a Christian. You'll get the pastor there saying something that HIV is a punishment from, from God, you know, all those things. Then I realized something that I cannot go to church because I'm punished. And then things were different like here in the U.S. And that is why the founder of Mothers to Mothers started the programs. Because of the inequality they saw between your future children and ours. In fact, that today we almost ended up pediatric AIDS in the developed countries, but in our world, there are still 600 babies who are born with HIV and are dying every day. And this is terrible because HIV is preventable. Let me show you some slides of, what, of the reason what's happening. Our global HIV prevalences, it shows that 34 million are living with HIV. And out of 34 million of people living with HIV, 23 million are in sub-Saharan Africa. Keep an eye on Africa. And then out of all those things, we only have a 25% of global disease burden. Out of that, we only had 3% of healthcare workers, which represent the nurses and the doctors. You know, Every day when you go to the clinic or you go to the to, 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 to health centers, it seems it's, it's like this. You know, one day I get to the, to, 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 to the hospital. Can you believe it? Those doctors there are, are working under pressure. You find that they, they, are having the exo they are exhausted and everything. They don't have even time to talk to the patient. And then let me tell you what it has affected me. One day, I get to the clinic like that, you know, I find the doctor. The doctor was so stressed. He, I, I was at the distance like the, that lady who was there. The doctor was saying, next. The patient, when the patient gets in, he just says, breathe in, breathe out. Uh, go, 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 go. Next. Then I realized that there is something because this doctor is working under the pressure. He doesn't have time to say anything to this to, 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 to every patient that gets in. You can imagine with a pregnant woman who's HIV positive. Is he going to get the, the proper care? No. Even if the, uh, uh, the drugs are available or the medicine are there, but it, it will be in vain because those people who are working at, the, uh, at our settings, they, 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 they are always having that exhaustion. Let me tell you how that is, uh, has affected my life. In 2003, I fell pregnant and then I went to the clinic like this. And I was only given only single dose of medicine to prevent mother to child. Can you believe it? The medicine was not enough to prevent my baby from being infected with HIV. And then I gave birth to a baby girl and then my baby was not picking up weight. And then I asked the doctor that you do the test. The doctor did the test to my baby and my baby tested positive. After my baby tested positive, was given the antiretrovirals. Can you believe it? In two weeks later, my baby died of HIV and AIDS. And I have to bury another child who died of AIDS. It, it was very painful. It was very painful for a mother 
to lose a baby. And then in 2009, Mothers to Mothers came into my community and then I, I became a mentor mother. Let me tell you what mentor mother did. Mentor mother were trained to provide education to all pregnant women. We addressed the issues like safer sex, uh, the, the issue like safer sex, nutrition, breastfeeding. And we are also treated like the health professionals because we are respected in our community. And we also teach those women to, be, to screen TB because if, if, if there is TB, if you didn't screen TB, you will die from TB while you can manage HIV. We also teach them about the, the uh, to screen the cervical screening so that they can live longer. And we also help them to disclose their status to their partner and to their family so that they can get support. And then um, before I went to Mothers to Mothers, I've realized that people in my community were dying in, thousand, in thousands, in dozens. You know, some were my, were my classmates, some were my relatives, some were my, you know, all those uh, 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 people around me. Then I've realized that I cannot be silent anymore. Then I went, I, I, I disclosed my HIV status to my family, and then I went to the uh, to my local community radio to, to, to disclose my status to my entire community. And then Mothers to Mothers came, be, began in 2001, the year I lost my first child. If Mothers to Mothers were there, were around, my story will be different like the story I am today. As I'm speaking to you, I'm a person, I'm strong, I'm healthy, and my life has a purpose, and my life has a meaning. And then Mothers to Mothers has employed, 11, has employed 1,000 positive women like me to end pediatric AIDS in nine African countries. There is no reason or anywhere where the baby should be born with HIV. No, no mother should bury their child because of HIV like I did. We, with the right education and empowerment of preventing mother-to-child transmission, Mothers to Mothers is a leader in a global effort to end pediatric AIDS. I live in a small rural area in South Africa, but thanks to Mothers to Mothers, I'm raising two negative children that are healthy. You know, having these two children, I see myself as the richest woman in the world. Because every day, the other one, the boy is Lefa. Why did I call him Lefa? Lefa means wealth. Wealth. He's my treasure. You know, he gave me a second chance to be a mother after all the tragedy that I went through. And her sister is Tisezo. Tisezo means courage. So every day when I go to work, I got that courage. I've got the strength that I am going to save the life, the life of our children, the life of our, you know, the life of our, of our, of our entire community. It's not only the life, but our future leaders. Because what I believe 20 years down the line, I won't be strong like this. Maybe I'll be like, you know, but having those children, indeed, I see myself as somebody who is very rich. I'm the richest woman in the world. Thank you. <laughs>